so we've got our last bag out here. Oh, we're ready to put our covers up on the back side of the head. So we've got everything here coming out of this bag. This is going to be for the right side of the head. And then everything over here, this is going to be for our left side of the head. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this hardware up to the head and put our covers on. So we're going to start out putting these covers in the back side of the head. So we're going to kind of bring this cover down, get it into position. And on the back side, we're going to be using one of these Allen headed bolts with the locking flange. So my bolt is going to go in. It's going to be hard for you to see there with the lock on the inside. And I've got that into place. I'm just going to tighten that down while I'm at it here quick. We've got a 13. We have that tightened. Now I got to jump down on this side. We're coming on this side. We got to put a bolt in. There's kind of a little insert here where that, that holds that into place. You can see how the head of this bolt wants to pull through this cover. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put a washer on. These are one of the washers that came off of our hardware from when we initially took things off. And then we got this nylock that's going to go up here on the inside. Slides like up in a groove and kind of sits in a holder. So once we get that started, we're going to put our impact on here. Kind of hold our nut up on the inside with our finger and just snug that up. We're going to move to the back where we've got this last bolt to go in right here. We're going to put, we're going to hold this and grab our impact here. And we just tighten that up. And now we have that cover in. Now we can move on to our center cover. Let me grab that. So now we're back up in here. We're going to put this top cover on. We can see in the back side, we're going to put a clip here on the back side to hold it on. And then the top, we get a key clip to hold this top in place. And that holds our top cover on. We're going to go ahead and move to the right hand side of the head and put those covers on next. Now that we're on the right hand side of the head, we're going to go ahead and put our first cover on. So we want to get it on over our locking mechanism. It's locked into place. On this side of the head, we also still have our uh, lock bolts with our hex head. I'm going to spin that in with an impact. Get our lock nut started on the inside. We've got that tightened up. So as we're back here we've got a little pop guy we're going to push in and then we need to spin that in with a Phillips screwdriver. Once we have that done, we can move back up here and put our other bolt in place. So we've got our bolt that goes up in here with that nylock again that will sit up in the groove. that in, I can tighten that up. Got that tightened up in place now and now we can go ahead and put our other cover on. So now we're going to go ahead and put our top cover on up in front. So this just gets a couple of clips. So we have one clip that goes up here on top and one clip that goes up in the front. Once we have those done, we've now completed putting our shields on, on this FD2 head. Next step is, before we run the head and start checking our knife speed, we need to check the oil levels on our wobble gearbox and some of our other gearboxes on the head. We want to make sure that this is level 
Uh, we're facing down a little bit, so we need to go ahead and raise our head up just a little bit to get this leveled out in order to check our oil levels. So we just leveled, we rolled the head back in order to get our wobble box level. So now we can go ahead and check our oil level. So that our oil level is going to be checked with a 22 mil wrench. This has got a little dipstick in here. And we've got two lines in our dipstick. So we're going to want to wipe this off now. And now that we've got this wiped off, make sure we have our copper washer on here. We're going to just finger tighten this back in. And then run it right back out. And we want to make sure that our oil is in between the two marks, and it is. So we've got good oil here. We'll just run this back in and snug this back up. Then we're going to move around to the back side of our head and check our oil levels there. So we're on the back side of the head now. We've got two more oil levels we want to check back here. The first is our chain case. We're going to check by this plug. And we want to make sure our oil is right at the top of the plug on here. So we're going to crack this loose. And there's an O-ring inside of here. So we want to make sure that we don't damage this O-ring as we're spinning this out if it's getting caught. So we're getting close. I'm going to spin out and I want to make sure, yep, my oil's right at the top of the plug. And I can run this back in now. So we've got enough oil in this chain case. So our next plug that we want to check is up in front on our main gearbox. And again there is an o-ring on the inside of this plug that we want to make sure that we don't damage as we're taking this plug out. They like to kind of be seated in there uh, from the factory. so. I like to kind of help it out with my finger and then they pop into place. So I'm finishing spinning this one out. We want to make sure that there's oil right at the bottom of the plug. And as I look in there you can see the oil is right at the bottom. So at this point we're going to put this plug back in and our main gearbox has oil in. Tighten this back up. So we've just finished checking our oil off of our two plugs off the main gearbox and our chain case. We can now run the combine. Before we do that, we're going to go up and we need to get ready to set our knife speed. The next thing we're going to want to do now that we've checked our oil levels is we're going to want to check our knife speed. In order to do that, we need to get our tack meter out and we're going to clean up our flywheel here, make sure we got it nice and clean put our reflective strip on it. Grab a piece of this. I'm going to put my reflective strip on here, stick it on the flywheel, and we're going to use our photo meter now in order to read our RPMs as this is spinning around. Ideally we want to be up right at 630 RPM, uh, not any over that, not much below that, so we're going to run this wide open and we're going to see what it's running for RPM. So we just took a reading on our knife speed and we are running 564, 565 RPM. So we're a lot lower than the 630 where we want to be. So we need to go around and make an adjustment now to our knife speed on this head. We need to make our adjustment to our knife speed right here. And here's what we're going to do for an adjustment on here. I've got my 10 mil wrench. I'm going to loosen this up. Take this bolt all the way out. We've got my bolt out. I'm going to take this plate off, I'm going to spin it over, and then I'm going to come back one turn with it. I'm going to put this on, and I'm going to come up just a little bit with my wrench, 
put my bolt back in here. And I've got my bolt in back in. And I'm going to take my wrench and now I'm going to spin all the way up clockwise till I hit my stop. And then I'm going to come back probably like a sixteenth. Once I've done that, I'm going to finish screwing the set screw in, tighten it down with my wrench, and then we're going to start up again and we're going to check our knife speed. So we just read our RPMs again and we are 626 RPM just right below that 630 so we're kind of at the sweet spot right there. So now we've got our knife speed set on the head. Inside our brown bag this is our in cab side draper adjustment harness. I'm going to open this up now. We're going to pull these harnesses all out of the bags here. So we've got our three pin power cord for powering the system. We've got our Draper speed adjustment that's going to mount on the console. And then we've got our main harness where we plug in down at the head. And then this is the part where we come up into the cab and we're going to plug our power in. And then we've got our plug in here for our in cab adjustment. So we would plug that in here. We've got some little zip ties that came with in our package and in the bag you're going to take these little zip ties and we want to zip tie this cabling right around here to hold this in place. That way these wires aren't pulling off of our control here. So make sure we get those all zip tied in place. And now we can take a harness over to the combine and get it installed. So we plug in right here next to our other single point connector to the left. That's where this harness is going to plug in. You're going to want to, you know, zip tie right next to your main harness on your combine so it becomes a nice clean install. From there, your harnessing is going to want to follow up through your pivot areas. And on a common cab combine, there's a plate right up under the center that you can take that plate out. And if you take that plate out up through your floor mat, you can cut a slit in there and run this harness through there. It comes up under your buddy seat. And from there you can run over and come up on the right hand side of the console for a nice clean install on this combine. So this is our side draper speed adjustment. And this bracket is gonna get mounted clear back on this back right corner. So we're gonna use these bolts that are in the back side of this rail in order to mount this back there to do an install. While I've got it sitting right here in my lap, we've got our three pin power plugged in back by our key and we're going to function test our side draper speeds just to make sure that everything is working the way it should. So I'm going to roll my head back so I can see my draper belts easier at this point. I'm going to start up my separator and feeder and if I run wide open if I spin this down to zero you can see my side belts have stopped and if I spin this clear up to 10 you know our belts are running pretty fast and as I keep adjusting in between our side drapers are slowing down as I keep going down most of the time we're running that three to four setting for doing beans out in the field. So that's our good starting point. So uh, we just function test this. Everything seems to be working good for us. <laughs> 